So this is the Fed website. They've gone through some changes in the recent years. Uh, I guess it's kind of about HTML5 and all that stuff. And uh, you can find the simulations under physics. So uh, these are fairly usable. Um, I think mostly intuitive. So if I check motion, looking for kinematics stuff, one of the simulations I'm looking for is just to here. I think it's this one, projectile motion. Um, so yeah, and these HTML5 simulations, they're great. They run practically on any device, um, any modern device, any cell phone or smartphone or a tablet, um, all the modern web browsers. So, um, so this is <laughs> what I like to use. And uh, I'll play with this for a bit, but I want you to show one, um, I guess, trick in case there were some people looking for one of the simulations I was using. So there was a simulation I was using to illustrate centripetal acceleration. And uh, if you are looking for it here, you will see that you don't see it here. And the uh, um, reason for that is this filter. There's a filter for HTML5. I think starting this year, they uh, had for this filter on by default, because when you turn this filter off, you will see quite a few simulations. So some of them take a bit of an effort to run, um, like this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so anything with the F symbol, which are flash simulations, uh, there is a way to run it, but you have to kind of go through hoops. And I think I'll describe that at some point. But um, so, so I think they didn't want to show this by default. So that's why to turn it off to kind of show all this. And uh, the centripetal acceleration simulation, yeah, it was this one. It's a Java simulation, which means uh, you need to have a special program installed or there is a browser compatible version or which does not run on iPad, but I think it will run on PC um, and probably Mac OS as well, as long as it's not iOS. Um, so, but th this is actually an improvement before you used to have to actually um, install Java runtime environment to do this. So, so yeah, so this is one of the, uh, this feels super slow, but um, anyways, so uh, maybe I'll come back to this after a bit of playing with the projectile motion simulation. Um, but I wanted to show that in case, so in order to get access to the simulation, you have to kind of go through that trick of uh, this uh, turning off one of the filters, which is there by default for a good reason. Uh, wait, did it? Sorry. Um, if one side, yeah, the, that HTML5 filter, that's there by default for a good reason, because uh, ones that are not HTML5, it takes a little bit of effort to get it to work. Sometimes it doesn't work. Um, but as long as you are aware of those limitations, you can turn off that filter to see all the simulations that FAT has had for decades. And that's been great uh, for many different things. So projectile motion. Um, so, um, you know, what's good about simulation is it kind of, it's good to test, play with the stuff. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess uh, <laughs> without a particular prompt or particular thing that you are trying to do, uh, it can be a little bit, uh, like playing Minecraft, which, you know, wide open sandbox, open is great. Uh, you can do open is great <laughs> until the, the, all the range of choices um, are a little bit too much sometimes. Let's see, what can I do here? Um, um, I think I can, 
I can try out some scenarios. So I think here's a one that's uh, familiar with a lot of people, uh, which is that, okay, that zero meter. Wow, height of zero meter looks weird. So um, this is, I think, a kind of um, prototypical scenario, you know, on a level ground, um, at what angle uh, should you fire this uh, cannonball so that it reaches the maximum uh, maximum distance, maximum range? And I think most people have good enough intuition to say it should be 45 degrees. That that's gonna give you the maximum range, and I can test it out a little bit too. And you know, fire it at slightly higher angle, 50 degrees and see that it lands, uh, can't zoom in, um, see that it lands slightly uh, before the 45 degree, and I can try launching it at 40 degrees, and see that it again lands slightly before 45 degrees, in fact, at the same spot that 50 degree one did. So I think that's good enough, and uh, you can also test it at different speeds to make sure that this result is somehow dependent on your initial speed. Now, you know, higher initial speed will mean that it goes farther. Can I scroll? Okay. Higher initial speed will mean it goes farther. Um, oh, maybe I can make it 20. Try to take up the whole screen. Okay, that seems better. So that's the 45 degree at 23 meters per second. And I can test it out again, you know, 50 degrees. It falls a little bit shorter, um, 40 degrees. It goes a little bit shorter again. So I, I think that's uh, easy enough to answer for most people, uh, just intuitively. Now, here's the kind of question that uh, um, Good to answer to see how good your intuition about uh, projectile motion is. And at the same time, because it's kind of difficult to work it out mathematically, even in a calculus based physics class like physics 4A, this would be one of the harder questions. Uh, that's where having a simulation helps because simulation can help you just test out the answers <laughs> without going through all the math yourself because this is simulating the real world physics. So this is the, let me just post the two questions that are sometimes that asked often. And it's uh, one of those questions that I think you can answer pretty quickly if you have good intuition. But um, if you're still developing your intuition, then it can be challenging to answer. So let me write the question down on the screen so that I have it written somewhere. Um, so question one would be um, how does angle of max range change if a ground is not level? Or in this particular case, the easiest thing to do is uh, raise the, oops, uh, raise the, can I not? Raise the cannon up to a higher height. So that would be effectively making the ground at that level. Um, so that wherever the cannonball will end up landing, it's gonna be at zero meter height, but the cannonball starts at 50 meter height. So that's one. Uh, will it still be 45 degree angle that gives us the maximum range? Or will it, be, will it be something else? Will it be, will it be uh, less than 45 degree or will it be more than 45 degree? So that's question one. And question two is, oops, uh, question two is a similar question as in how does the uh, angle of a max range change if uh, not ground, if it's not truly a projectile motion as in, if um, uh, if air resistance is significant, and this question would actually be too 
difficult to, to answer mathematically, even in physics 4A, even for people who've taken calculus one and did reasonably well, uh, because <laughs> this involves differential equations. And um, I don't know if I can do it all that well. Uh, but what's nice about simulation is that with the simulation, they can do uh, numerical calculation and computers are super good at doing numerical calculation and there's a way to turn on air resistance and with the air resistance turned on I can uh, just try out stuff to see what the answers are so um, so so I guess uh, let, let me try this um, so I don't know this virtual class session. It's not really, um, it's not conducive to making it super um, interactive, especially with the recording on. Um, so, so you are welcome to participate. <laughs> if you're somewhere in a place where you can't quite participate, that's fine. Uh, this is what I would ask you to do. Let's try tackling question one. So I'm going to drag this up and put it at the height of uh, 10 meters. And this is the question I'm posing to everyone. And I would ask you to answer in the chat. You are welcome to send it to everyone or you can just send it to me as a private message if you don't want a recording of your presence here. Um, so this is the question, uh, the form of the answer I'd like you to give. So, um, so as a multiple choice, so A, B, C, where A would be one where you said that angle of the max range is still gonna be at 45 degree. B is where angle of max range is less than 45 degree. And C, angle of max range is greater than 45 degree. So let me give people a few seconds to make a choice, <laughs> um, send the answer um, in the chat. A, B, or C, either to everyone or to me privately. And once I had some chance for some people to answer, I will, um, I'll give it a try, see what we get. So I see a couple answers. I'll give you 10 more seconds before I start trying stuff. And you know, this answer is really more for you than anything else, because I think until you answer it, you haven't quite thought about it. Uh, I see a lot of A's, I see some B's, uh, no C's, interesting. Um, so let's give it a try. That's the wonderful thing of relation that you can just try it and see, <laughs> see what you get. Uh, okay, so um, I'm already out here. Let me try shooting something at 45 degree and see um, if it's gonna stay in screen. All right, it's staying in screen, good. Okay, so 45 degrees, so this sets down a marker. So this is the place to beat if uh, any other angle is gonna be the maximum angle. So since I had some answers for B, so let's try B, uh, 40 degrees. Ah, it went slightly over. So this becomes a search process then. Uh, okay, so 40 degrees gave me something that's farther away than 45 degree. Uh, let's see if uh, 35 degree gives me something even farther. Okay, okay. So at 35 degree, I'm actually at a similar place as a 45 degree. So it looks like at this height of 10 meters, somehow uh, 40 degree is the angle that gives the maximum range. And and the simulation is where you can kind of explore a number of things. So. So, okay, um, so we have one answer here that with all this set of parameters that 40 degree was the one that gave the maximum range. Um, now you can ask the question, does this change? If some of these parameters change, what if we, my initial speed is lower? I actually don't know the answer in this question. Let me give it a try. So with a 40 degree, I get that. Uh, with a 45 degree, it's uh, worse, okay. Although it hit the target. Let me try 35 degree. Huh, 
it's actually farther away than the 40 degree was. Okay, uh, so apparently um, once you are no longer on level ground, then and 30 degree was probably all close, 30 and 35 were close to each other. And 25 is around the same. Is it all gonna be the same? I actually don't know. Okay, at 20 degree now, it's definitely less than where all the other stuff were. So, um, so you know, you get the result that I think between uh, those two attempts, one consistent thing that you got was that whether it's at 45, whether at 40 degrees or whether it's at 30 degrees, that uh, the angle that gave maximum range was less than 45 degrees. And um, and I think, it, let me kind of land this plane. Um, th this is where having some explanation for your intuition is useful because I think uh, it, it was helpful for me to think about it in this way, that when it was on level ground, so, so you know, when you fire something at 25 degrees, didn't go too far. And at the same time, if you fire something at 70 degrees, it also didn't go very far, although it went really high. And you can kind of see between these two what they are lacking. When you fire something at very low angle, it, a lot of that velocity is in the horizontal direction. So that's great. But uh, because it doesn't go very high, what you have, what you have a, as a limitation is that this cannonball doesn't stay in the air for that long. And when you fire something at a very large angle, it stays in the air for a long time. But the horizontal velocity is so small that it doesn't move that much horizontally. So you might think of 45 degree as the, the angle that strikes the balance between the two that enough of the, the speed, the component of speed, the velocity, is in the vertical direction to keep the cannonball in air, while there's also enough going in the horizontal direction to keep it moving horizontally. And 45 degrees, the angle that uh, struck the balance between the two when it's a level ground with air resistance. And uh, the natural then the question you could ask as you imagine changing the situation is how changing the parameters? You know, what if it's not level? Or what if uh, air resistance is slowing things down? Um, you can see, uh, does the 45 degrees still strike that balance? And if not, uh, which way will balance the shift? So I think, uh, the fact that no one answered the C doesn't mean all of you have a fairly good intuition because I think uh, whether consciously or not, I think you saw that being positioned at a higher height does mean that being a, like firing at a higher angle doesn't really buy you much of uh, what you need. And whereas uh, being at a smaller angle uh, gives you kind of allows you to trade more of what you have, which is with a higher height, you get more time in air. So you can trade that additional time for more faster velocity horizontally. So uh, I guess I'm out of time to do any air resistance stuff. Uh, so I guess I'm not doing that, but <laughs> the point of me showing this simulation is so that you can play with it for yourself. Let me just to get rid of my annotations here. And uh, I, we did a circular motion. I really just want you to show one thing. The reason I want you to be able to access it is so that, well, you can access it and run it for yourself. Um, what I want you to show you is, which I think I can at least talk through in the next minute or so, as, it, as soon as it loads up, is the circular motion. I think it, I do cover it in the lecture video, but you can play with it yourself here. So the, these two arrows that show, the green arrow is the velocity. You can see that it's pointing in the direction of the uh, movement. And can I move it faster? No, it doesn't actually make it move faster. Um, all right. Um, so, so that's the velocity. 
and the blue arrow that's showing, that's the acceleration. It's showing the acceleration. And uh, with this motion, what you see is that in this, what's called the uniform circular motion, uh, that this is moving at a constant speed. The length of this arrow is not changing. But as it's moving in circle, it is accelerating because the velocity is changing and the change of velocity is represented by this acceleration vector. And this is one of the kind of unintuitive application of the physics definition of acceleration, meaning rate of change of velocity, which could include the change of direction. And this is the, and um, we didn't need to talk about centripetal acceleration and circular motion in general, because later in the semester, you will see some significant examples of circular motion. And you need to know that the circular motion always involves acceleration in the physics sense. So, uh, okay, I think that's all the time you have. Uh, thank you to everyone who's here. Um, any questions people had that people wanted me to address? No questions, <laughs> comments you wanna leave in recording? <laughs> if not, let me stop the recording here and say goodbye to people joining by recording the video and I'll stay online for a little bit in case there are any questions or people had a one-on-one -on -one things to handle. So, um, so bye to people joining by recording the video.